Hello, Christ is in our midst. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Eric Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Tuesday, January 10th, 2023, and here are the readings for today. Today's epistle reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 7 through 13. Brethren, grace was given to each of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore it is said, When he ascended on high, he led a host of captives, and he gave gifts to men. In saying he ascended, what does it mean but that he had also descended into the lower parts of the earth? He who descended is he who also ascended, far above all the heavens, that he might fill all things. And his gifts were that some should be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to the measure of manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 3, verses 19 through 22. Let us be attentive. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch, who had been reproved by John for Herodias, his brother's wife, and for all the evil things that Herod had done, added this to them all, that he shut up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form as a dove. And a voice came from heaven, Thou art my beloved Son, with thee I am well pleased. Glory to thee, our God. Glory to thee. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Christ is in our midst. Long-time viewers of this channel are aware that I try very hard to keep my reflections based on what's written in the Gospel, based on what's written in the Epistle, maybe something about the life of the Church. I have done other things, like read the Way of the Ascetics, or um, the Reflections on St. Nikolai of Ohrid, but for the most part, I've tried to keep my personal things personal. Well, today's a little different because this day, January 10th, holds a particular important meaning for me. There are actually three different things that happen on this day that are pivotal in my life, and I'd like to share them with you a little bit. The first one is today, January 10th, is the day that we commemorate our Father Among the Saints, Gregory of Nyssa, who happens to be my patron saint. St. Gregory lived in Cappadocia, which is in a region of now would be called Turkey, and he had, of course, an older brother by the name of Basil. Many of you are familiar with St. Basil. He is St. Basil the Great. They had a sister, Macrina, and they were a very, very powerful, but yet spiritually important family in the life of the church. Within three generations, there are nine saints in that family, nine people that are commemorated at the same level or higher as St. Gregory. That's really remarkable. That is a very special family. Grandmothers, mothers, fathers, and also children are all on that list. But in addition to that, St. Gregory was a great writer on his own regard. By the time you get to the conclusion of the ecumenical councils, they label him as the Father of the Fathers. That's a great title, and it's one that is obviously not shared by many others. He wrote about life after death. He wrote about the soul and resurrection. He wrote about the creation of man. His work, The Life of Moses, is a classic example of using allegory as a way to interpret scripture that brings it into new meaning and helps to get an understanding of the spiritual life and the journey of a human being into the life in Christ. He wrote so many other things. He defended his brother. His brother went after a particular heretic by the name of Eunomius who argued that there is only one who is unknowable in essence, that is the father, and therefore he is the only true God. Everything else is below him, so the Son and the Holy Spirit are not God. They are some intermediate situation between God and humanity, but they're not God. Um, and that God is knowable in terms of his unbegottenness. Well, Basil 
attacked him and criticized him for his misunderstanding of the Holy Trinity. Eunomius responded back, but St. Basil died before he had a chance to respond back. So his brother, St. Gregory, wrote not one, not two, but twelve different responses to Eunomius. So by the time he was done, Eunomius was pretty much done. So St. Gregory holds particular um, partiality in my life. He wrote about uh, many different things on in many different occasions, and as a result of his theological power, his priestly nature, and also, honestly, his sense of humor, I find him to be a very compelling person. In addition to St. Gregory of Nyssa and the day we commemorate, this also is the 24th anniversary of my ordination into the priesthood. In 1999, on a Sunday morning, Bishop Antoon of the Antiochian Orthodox Church ordained me into the priesthood with the sole intention of me serving our parish in Butler, Pennsylvania. Now, I have since been relocated from Butler to Newcastle, where I remain to this day, but for these 24-some years, I have served at the bishop's pleasure in those two places. It is a great joy to be a priest. It has its moments of, of great profundity, of great emotion, of sometimes of sadness, but most of the time of great joy. I'm very grateful to be a priest, and I thank God that I've been able to serve both in Butler at St. Anthony's and now at St. Elias here in Newcastle. I'm very grateful to be able to do that in a way um, that hopefully is beneficial to those people that I serve. You'll have to ask them how effective I am or how what kind of a priest I am, but God willing, um, this is a journey that we continue together towards the kingdom of heaven. The third that we remember on this day is the birth of Anne Hopko. Anne Hopko is the wife of Father Tom Hopko, and I had the absolute joy of getting to know her very, very well over the last few years. She lived not far from the monastery at Elwood City, Pennsylvania, and she and I got a chance to get to know each other very well as I first worked with Father Tom in some of the things that he was doing for ancient faith, more the technical things. There's nothing I could teach him theologically. Um, but otherwise, I got to know her. And then after he passed, we got to know each other better. And I got to have many lunches with her in her kitchen um, and just share different stories and get to know each other really well. And it is a real joy that she was a part of my life. She reposed um, this past uh, late summer, and her loss in my life is very deep. I will miss her very, very much. And I know that she is reunited with her father and also with Father Tom and all of her loved ones. And of course, I pray very earnestly that God remembers her eternally in his kingdom. But one of the wonderful aspects about this day in respect to how I see things is each one of those has an important part to play in my own life. I'm a better person because I got to spend some time with Ann Hopko. I'm a better person because of the life experiences that I've received as a priest. I think sometimes priests go in thinking that they know everything and that their job is to teach and impose. I think that that's a mistake. I have learned so much from the parish that I serve. I've learned so much from the people that I spend time with and I get to understand. Uh, and together we work. I, as a priest, certainly have a certain charism and certain responsibilities, hearing confessions, serving the liturgy, and so forth. But these things all build towards helping us all get closer to God and closer to the kingdom of heaven. And so. In addition to that, of course, St. Gregory and his teachings remain highly influential in my life. And so through all of those things, I have been deeply blessed. And God willing, I'm able to take those blessings and impart them to the people that I serve. I do not intend to keep these for myself. I hope that in some way what I do is a benefit not just to me and the ones that I am close to, but to us all, so that we all may eventually be together with one another in God's heavenly kingdom. So I thank God for this day, and thank you very much for this little indulgence. Please forgive my, my selfish focus on these things, but may God bring us all closer to his heavenly kingdom through this and many other ways that we have benefited from people like Anne,
people like these communities, and of course, our Father, St. Gregory of Nyssa. So may God bless you and those that you love today and always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Thanks for joining me. If you liked this video, give it a like, share it, subscribe, and God willing, we'll see you soon. Thank you.